Welcome back to the Friday Art Sale where we spill our thoughts on the week's tech and products and everything else all in the time it takes to drink a pint of beer. I'm Tyler. With me as always is Watts. Not always because you were That's right. a sea otter. That's Fuck right. right. With me sometimes. As sometimes. I yeah. Had so much FOMO about that event. And it was justified. It was pretty yeah. fun. Um, I know. Yeah. It's good. It's good. I wasn't there. This is probably like fist fight or two, and just <laughs> as happens. <laughs> but uh, yeah, still, man, I, that's one of my favorite events. It's probably the best event of the year, all in all. And it was packed this year. Like, I mean, they sold out the booth space, so there was so much to see. Our coverage is going to go on far too long. You know, when everyone's done with their roundups of three or four things, we'll be still posting like. Three or four things each per day. It's kind of ridiculous. Um, but literally weeks worth of stuff to flood bike rumor with. It's just so much, man. It's so much. And it's pretty cool. Yeah, um, it is. Yeah. Damn it. You missed out. Well, next year. Next year I'm going. For whatever media outlet would like to. <laughs> so we can afford to pay you. <laughs> um, I tried to get you out there. You could have crashed on the floor in a room. Yeah, I totally. Um, I haven't done that. Uh, I had a race. <laughs> You really did, and you did race. really well, too. I did pretty well. Which race? And uh, it was the Bootlegger 100 mm -hmm. in Lenore, which is one of the better races out there. It's so hard. Um, gravel or mountain? It's gravel. Right. A lot of elevation gain, and uh, this one guy and I were jockeying back and forth the whole time, and I managed to put a gap on him on a big hill, like a substantial gap, and was like, yes, I've got it. I put my head down to, like, bury it, and I just blew right past a turn. <laughs> and then I uh, and turned around, and by that time I was like, or? I don't know, is he behind me or in front of me? No, I just, seriously, I put my head down like this, and just went, boom! Oh, man. I should have known better. That's what it is. Um, well, but I'd rather than this, yeah. Well, you got second in the race, so, right? Yeah. You finished second? Yeah. yeah. Good job, man. Cause Thank you. It's no small fee. That's a fairly popular race, which means, I'm assuming a big crowd. How many people well, are in the single seat? I, I have no idea. I don't pay attention to that. But even with regards to like what my time was, I have no idea. My time from last year, I have no idea. Who was there? I don't know. I don't know their names. So they're not tagging you on Instagram? It's... I used to have, yeah, I just, um, I don't know. Well, you know what we forgot to talk about was the beer. You had a pint night last night with two different Dude. breweries and we, we split the difference. Uh, I've got cigars. No, you've got no, Oscar I've got Blues. Oscar which is apparently a collaboration with a Japanese oh, yeah. brewery. And it's got some, I can't remember now, dang it, Yoko? Kono? Yoko? Joko? So, it's two syllables <laughs> and two O's. <laughs> terrible. But it's got, like, use your fruit and something, right? Mm hmm Anywho, and you're and drinking. I've got uh, Cigar City, Gaia Berry, Gaia Berra Pale. Yeah, they're both it's delicious, because yeah. I happen to have one. That was a good event, yesterday. too. That was a good yeah, turnout, and, uh, yeah. Taco, this place smelled like old tacos this morning. Kind of gnarly. <laughs> but it was big enough that they get a taco truck one out front. That's how you know you've made it. When a taco truck shows up at your bike shop for a pint night, you have arrived. <laughs> I think so. All right. It's a good crowd. And we left early. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, it went kind of late. Sweet. Um, I'm surprised I didn't drunk text a bunch of people last night. <laughs> uh, well. <laughs> Did I? I didn't get any. I'm okay. kind of sad. If anybody else got one, I didn't. I'd be disappointed. But tech stuff. Let's see. Everything that yeah, happened piece. happened at Sea Otter. So I would just say check bike rumor for a ton of that. But when we were out there, we decided to do more video, and we had some fun with it. So not only did we shoot last week's Friday yard sale at the event oh, with, with Paul Price from Paul Component, yeah. which was super good, and he actually complimented me on my interviewing and, and like okay. hosting skills. So very nice. Thank you, Paul. Warms my heart. Yeah, I haven't um, watched it yet. I'm sorry. And uh, Paul, you were very good in it too. I appreciate it. Billy, so are you. But yeah, check that one out. That was a great episode because we talked about what was going on and got the perspective of Paul Components founder, Paul Price, in it, along with Billy, who owns a PR firm that reps some brands. And we try not to focus on his brands, talk more about everything we saw. So if you kind of want to hear what some other people think about Sea Otter, give that one a listen. But while we were there, we thought the collective we, Royal We, Trevor. Uh, thought it would be funny to interview Amanda Patty because she is a very lively personality and if you don't follow her on Twitter, would highly recommend it. Or on Instagram. Or Instagram. On Instagram anywhere too. really, yeah. 
And uh, so we interviewed her, did a little bike check with her. And um, prior to that, she let me taste her little cocktail that she had in her water bottle, which was probably a large percentage tequila with some kind of sugar-free lemon lime flavoring added for a margarita. And then she was going to do practice laps. So here's the bike check. Are we, are we rolling? No, we are. Okay. I'm Amanda Batty, and this is my Da Vinci Spartan. And uh, it's got some pretty custom features on it. As you can see, it's got Eagle drivetrain and Skittles in the head tube. And uh, we're rolling with some lead in the down tube. It helps me go real fast. The, uh, the rear hub has been smashed into a non-boost frame. And the, uh, the fork is completely blown out. This is a multifunction mission bike. Sometimes we go out for serious rides on serious terrain. You need like a little bit of backup. Sometimes you need stickers that proclaim who you are, what you're doing. <laughs> Why do you have a saddlebag on your race bike? In case you need supplies like tequila, emergency cocaine. Sorry, you saw it. I didn't just say that. Um, drugs, cash, CO2. Whippets. <laughs> Who are you racing today? For this weekend? Uh, I'm, I might race the, uh, the sea otter downhill. And um, I might, I think short track happens, so I'm not racing that. But um, I might race the, oh, nope, e-bike's also over. Pretty much, oh, I'm racing the tequila championships. Drinking more than everybody else is. Um, I'm winning. Winning by far, crushing it. Just call me Lance. Um, yeah, that's it. All right, good luck. Thanks. <laughs> so it, it kind of like, <laughs> I don't want to use the word functioning alcoholic because I don't know her that well. I saw, I, you know, that was the first time I'd met her in person. We've been talking back and forth on emails and phone. But um, super fun to hang out with her for you know the 20 minutes or so that I did. And the fact that she was actually going literally from that straight to do practice laps on either the swallow or the DH is kind of scary, <clears throat> but also awesome. Now I have even more FOMO because I come into more and more. Yeah. Was, like, I've always enjoyed her. So we're trying to get her on here for a regular, to do a regular mm, segment with Amanda Batty. So Amanda, so if you're watching this, I'm holding you to it, we're going to do something cool. Mm -hmm. Ideas. Yes, we have ideas. As far as the other tech, you know, like some of the stuff we reported on, one of the things that was a little bit of a surprise because it's a crowded field is headsets. So we took the opportunity to ask Mike Pfeiffer, who's the president of Wolf Tooth Components, why in the world they would want to start with headsets, you know, because you've got right. generic stuff yeah. that just shows up on every bike and you've got super high end stuff from like Chris King and Cane Creek and like how would you compete against that? Because what are you going to bring to the table that's different? So It's like somebody else starting a chain ring company right here. Right. There's a million. Is that happening? There's a lot of them. Yeah. Actually, I picked up a carbon fiber chain ring from there. I saw them at NABS, and now I have one to try. The problem is it's not 12 speed. And almost all my mountain bikes are now 12 speed. Which It's 10 speed? Because I still ride fucking 10 speed. It'll do 10 11. You want to try it out? Sure. All right. Fits on SRAM crank, SRAM direct mount. No, no, no. It's campy. No. It's a mountain bike thing. Yeah. Right now I'm with Mike Pfeiffer, president of Wolf Tooth Components, and he's also the man behind their new precision headset. So I figured we'd ask him, like, why make a headset? There's a lot of headsets out there. There are a lot of headsets. We wanted to do uh, a few things. First of all, of course, we wanted a made in the U.S. Uh, headset, um, really high quality, stainless steel, uh, enduro bearing. On the bottom, we've got a double lip seal on the crown race, so that keeps any uh, any you know dust or water out of those bearings. Uh, on the top, we've also got another uh, custom molded lip seal, again with stainless steel bearings. And then uh, another thing that we did that's a little bit different is we've got three different stack height options for all of our designs. We've got kind of the the lowest possible, you know, typically about five or six millimeter stack height. You've got a 15 millimeter stack height and you've got a 25 millimeter. So it just lets you, you know, kind of adjust that without having to use uh, separate headset spacers. So it looks cleaner, just a nice, smooth, clean look. And, and the top cap piece too. The top cap piece is our signature uh, Wolf Tooth 5 millimeter top cap. 
It's especially useful on uh, carbon steer tube bikes where you're supposed to leave uh, about five millimeters of steer tube above the stem. But it's equally uh, useful even on aluminum one where you just don't have to worry about trying to get it cut perfectly flush. You can leave it a little bit long. Right. So those are a few of the key features. And then, of course, just the whole rainbow of colors. So you can you know match it to your bike. Or yeah. And then for installation, you guys came up with a really nice tool that's hiding back there somewhere. Yeah. So what we did with this, uh, a common problem with the, uh, called a install nose, uh, on a lot of the tools is that they'll damage the, the rubber seal, whether it's like a Cane Creek or some other brand or ours, uh, it'll damage the rubber seal when you go to install it. So with this nose, it's kind of perfectly contoured to the crown race and it doesn't touch the seal. And then we've got an O-ring that holds this on to the actual uh, the installation tool so it doesn't fall off and then you can install your crown race without damaging anything. Right on. And so what do the headsets retail for? The price on a complete headset is going to range between $100 and $120 depending on the exact model that you, uh, that you go with. And then how about the installation tool? The installation tool is $15 for that, okay. for that part. Does it work on a PVC pipe? Like the PVC pipe that I have that I've filed down to bevel yeah. that I use for slamming it headsets may, on. It may or may not. It depends on the diameter. <laughs> You have to check and see. You might be able to get it on a piece of PVC. All right, right on. Mike, thanks a ton. Yeah. Congratulations. They look awesome. All right, thanks. What did he say? I forget what he said. All right, we just it watched like, it. It was Musa and... Musa? In the U.S. Oh. But that was kind of his reasoning? It's, uh, it's got a, a lot of ceiling, but mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. one of the cooler parts, it's not even headsets. I mean, headsets are cool and they're nice and expensive, but uh, they had the tool to press them on, super fitted, and so if you didn't catch the little bit at the end there with mine, like my tool for pressing on the crown race is literally a PVC pipe that I have sanded the inside edge to bevel, to yeah. fit, you know, the generic crown race that comes on like every bike. Works fine, haven't had any problems yet. But if you want to go pro, Wolf Tooth has you covered with a fancy tool that I think, unless I've missed. Is it the pressing the cups or just the crown race? Uh, crown race? Okay, all right. That's yeah. what I didn't hear. Because um, they've got some ceiling on there, so it's a little bit different. It's not just a metal piece. So that's that's part of where this oh, extra that's ceiling what they were comes saying. in. All right. I didn't know what they seem I was like, seal? Is he talking about extra bearing seals? Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, was they act as bearing seals, technically. So, what else do you want to talk about? Go, did we just talk about that? Yeah, we did. <laughs> that counted? Sure, why not? I mean, what... I mean, obviously, I was paying a little bit of attention because I was, like, busting after sea otter. But, um, what else do you see that was... So there's a couple standouts. This like is the, the funny part about going to this event. It's literally, like, you're we're slammed running around booth to booth. You know, what, what do you got? Cool, take some pictures, take some notes. And then... On to the next meeting, or I hate setting meetings at these things because you end up scattershot all over instead of just like flowing through it in a logical pattern. But every booth we go to, everybody asks, you know, like, oh, what'd you see that's cool? Because these people are trapped in their booths. And literally, like, by the time I get to the booth, I can't remember where I was five minutes ago. But the, the couple of things that stood out to me that I, I was telling people about were uh, challenges finally gone with a proper tubeless for their. Starting with their gravel tire and a new gravel tire at that, uh, but the cool thing is, you know, their cyclocross tires are crazy popular. And mm -hmm. by this fall, so for this coming cross season, they should have every single one of their different tread patterns for cyclocross in a t proper tubeless ready mm -hmm. casing. So that was cool. Um, let's see, uh, Victoria took their cross treads that they introduced last year and have a gravel tire version of that which uh, that post will be coming soon, so stay, stay tuned for that one. And then um, probably two of the coolest things that really stuck in my mind were the Niners prototype for their full suspension gravel bike. This is like the third time I've seen some iteration of it. Mm -hmm. you know, so whether or not you need full suspension for gravel is up for debate, but there's probably going to be a market for that. And their design is pretty cool because if you look at it from the drive side, you kind of can't tell it's full suspension. Like at just a quick glance. But you flip it around, the way they've like hidden the shock in between the C tube and the rear tire, it's a pretty trick. That's Apparently great. they had to apply for a new patent and stuff. So I've got hmm. uh, we've already posted that story, but I've got a full video run through with Chris Guy about the bike and everything that I'll be posting separately. So 
Uh, stay tuned for that, or just search Niner on Bike Moon, and you can see the photos in the meantime. Um, and then the other one was, and this is this is why I love, love, love small companies. I didn't get to. What? No, go on. All right. Uh, Alchemist is an Italian brand. They make, you know, really funky carbon fiber rims. You know, they're the ones that have, like, this 3D structuring. They look like bridges sometimes and all this. But what they did with their hubs is, you know, DT's star ratchet ring. You know, it's basically, like, two toothed ratchet rings. And which, you know, it's pretty much inside of every DT Swiss hub, which right. a lot of people use as stock OEM stock wheel sets. They took the, the concept and made it bigger. So now the bearing sits inside of the ratchet ring that's in the free hub body. So you've got larger diameter and the bearings right on there, so it's super stable. But by giving, giving it a larger diameter, it can handle bigger forces. So think about, you know, when wheels started, you know, you're talking about a cassette that was like that big, right? Now you've got an Eagle cassette, like a 52, that's that big. Think of how much more torque that's putting on those internals. Sure. So they grew that considerably, which can handle that torque load better. And then the other thing is, you know, if you think about two rings that are toothed, I mean, granted, like, just the diagonals of it are going to keep it mostly locked into place. But what these guys did is they took so that the teeth on one edge are, like, faced in and the other ones are faced out. And so when they, they go in, it's like you're locking, like, this way, this way, and this way. And so it's like it makes the whole structure so much more stiff from, from one end of the hub to the other. When you said the diagonals, you're talking about... Like, well, think about, so, if you have something like this, and there's angles, yeah, and you have all those teeth, like, DT, like you're not going to be able to move it much. Yeah, I just, right? just like, what part? Okay. I don't know. I mean, tangents. Just want to make sure you're saying the right words. I'm making stuff up, basically. This is the bike people will <laughs> Everything I just said apart. came out of my ass. Because they know so much more. Uh-huh. Just, read just go ahead and leave in the comments about how I'm wrong, and I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And then look at the pictures, because it's awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Because everyone can do a better job. Totally. You don't have to go to engineering school to make bikes. Mm -mm. I mean, really that's why this geometry will never work. Regarding the Niner, that's great. I'm curious to see what that market is. It's cool that people are doing something different. Yeah. I, just, I do feel like we're becoming very soft. <laughs> what does that have to Not Everybody wants to ride a rigid steel rigid. everything. But... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I see applications. I, I do see applications. Yeah. Well, I, I kind of wonder, like, with the gravel scene, you've got these amazing epic races and stuff, but look at what cross country's done, right? Like, cross country used to be raced on hardtails or maybe a hardtail with 80 mil travel. And or then, on a union, maybe then a Alpina. Yeah, exactly. And then the courses got a little rougher. Actually, for a while, I think they got pretty easy and, you know, everyone got kind of soft, you know, but. Nowadays, the cross-country courses, people are racing 124s or even full suspension. A lot of the pros are racing full suspension for good cause because those courses are nuts, man. Like that log roll section on the last one when Nina lost like at the last second, that's bonkers, right? And that's a cross-country race course. And so I kind of wonder like with the gravel scene, is that going to take the same thing? Is Are they going to keep up in the game on the courses to make it a little bit tougher, a little bit tougher to where, you know, full suspension does make sense. I hope so. Or just where it just becomes more of adventure racing instead. Yeah. Man, because that was the frustrating part of the last two races I've done, is they were gravel road races. Road races just raced on gravel. Right, pace so lines and everything. Pace lines, like, just bonkers. I mean, guys in skin suits, <laughs> arrow bars. Just that ain't gravel. Of, well, yeah, it's kind of not. Like, I'm, like, I'm that, uh... The Croatan, my favorite part was a Savage Road setup where it was just this gnarly puddled road with little bridges between it. You had to hit right every time or you went into the drink. Like it uh, changed everything. Otherwise, you just have your you just you just have your head buried and you're just going. Yeah. There is no term worse than hero gravel. It's like hero <laughs> dirt. Hero gravel is probably the worst. And I get it. It's just one of those fast roads. But Okay, so then, just to play devil's advocate, what happens if they get so rough that people start bringing hard it becomes a cross country. Where they start bringing 29ers, well, exactly, that's, right? That's the whole thing. I mean, even at if the gravel scene, what's old is new. So then all of a sudden, when it gets to that point... Then it's cross-country race. Yeah, and then it's cross-country race, and then we're like, oh, wait, let's reinvent this again. And make it, well, yeah, 
It's just going to keep what if being you, I mean, I, so I feel like in that case, you know, if you're going to host it as a gravel race, whatever, you could make it whatever kind of course you want, but just say it's got to be a drop our bike. Just like, in my Absolutely. opinion, well, for our cross races, state series, you know, granted they're not UCI, but they should just say it's got to be a cross bike because the last race of that series, I showed up and there was literally first day there was that much snow when we were fighting through the second day was worse because it was packed down and super chunky dude showed up on a fat bike and just left us in the dust i mean yeah. for everybody that yeah. brings a cross bike you know he was local he could are, switch yeah. over and you just you know he kind of like takes the fun out of it when you're competing against an unfair advantage like that even if you don't care about the results it's just like it destroys the spirit of it so i feel like but in I, that case i don't know i mean in that case i can also think of people who got destroyed by a guy on a fat bike in kansas which is not a fat bike course at all, I mean, but that isn't. Well, I, mean, I don't I know though because it. wasn't it like super muddy and just well, not this last skinny last tires were super fast, spunked up. Uh, okay. um, yeah. Uh, so uh, the Croton, I definitely rode a drop bar bike, but for um, what's it called? Bootlegger. <laughs> Bootlegger. <laughs> I was on my mountain bike with a pair of just a different set of wheels, mm. uh, skinnier tires, which I honestly didn't even need that because. Because I'm riding single speed, and I need all the torque on the handlebar that I can get. So even the widest drop bar just doesn't put me in a position for climbing. Because this whole race is where that. Um, so the climbs, I've got a wide bar I can really torque on. What are not even like those, um, the super flare, like the. And that's fine, but it still work. puts me in a position that I'm just not super into. Hmm. Um, Did you clip some air bars to it? Yeah. <laughs> last year, and you can cut to this picture, I guess, I did put this old Velocity, like, tri-bike uh, double water bottle thing on the back mm -hmm. so that I could have more water bottles. Not remembering why that's such a bad idea. And somewhere, probably 15 miles into the race, I just ejected both bottles when I hit a bump. But if you want any proof that gravel's an extra triathlon, my bike set up and loans enough to show you. Sweet. Sweet. Um, yeah. What else? I don't know. Me I mean, I'm kind of almost done. <laughs> Me too. I can't tell with your fancy koozie. Shall we welcome everyone to the weekend? Welcome All right. to the weekend, fuckers. <laughs> oh my god. Thank you. <laughs> Should we clean up the bike? <laughs> <laughs> Might be as good as it gets. Tyler, put some burritos on top of the bike. It'll just get better. Wrap it up. <laughs>